Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. I had so much to share on this topic of Pentecost that I made a part two video. So in April 2022, General Conference, the talk, The Power of Spiritual Momentum, given by our prophet, President Nelson, he said, my dear brothers and sisters, with all the pleadings of my heart, I urge you to get on the covenant path and stay there. Experience the joy of repenting daily. Learn about God and how he works. Seek and expect miracles. So in the spirit of seeking and expecting miracles, I wanted to share this story that happened to me on Pentecost Day. That was Sunday of last week. Now, in order to fully appreciate what this experience meant to me, we need to travel back in time to when I was a little girl. You can see in this picture, I'm surrounded by all these stuffed animal cats because I loved cats. I adored cats but I was allergic to cats, so I could not have a real cat. And I loved snuggling my stuffed animal cats at night until my allergies were so bad that my mom took me to the doctor and the, the doctor said, you have to get all those stuffed animal cats off your bed and far away because they were giving me really bad allergies from the dust mites and the dust on them. So that was devastating to my little heart. I ended up collecting porcelain cats and putting them on a shelf. So as I got older, I married my husband, David, who he actually loves cats just as much as I do. And our kids love cats too. So you can see this picture of our daughter's birthday. It's all about cats and Halloween all about cats. So I want to tell two different stories regarding cats because sometimes we pray and we don't get what we ask for. And that was the case with cats all of my life. In fact, I received allergy shots weekly for over 15 years to help me to not be so allergic to almost everything, including cats. And it actually did. I don't take allergy medicine anymore. And I was able to conquer almost all of my allergies, but not the cats, even though that was part of the regimen. And since a little girl, I just prayed and prayed that I would get over those allergies. But that prayer was not answered in the way that I wanted. Whereas other times, sometimes we don't ask, and the Spirit answers the unspoken prayers of our hearts. And so on Pentecost, that happened. So unbeknownst to me and my kids, my husband had made an arrangement with his brother and my sister-in-law for us to babysit their two adorable gray kins all day on Sunday Pentecost. So after church, we came home. And this was a huge surprise for the kids and for me. And they were so excited, but I was a little bit concerned about my allergies. So I said, let's take the kittens outside. And while we were out there playing with them, my daughter, who did not know we were getting these cats, told me, Mom, I had a dream last night that an eagle swooped down and grabbed one of these kittens. And my husband and I looked at each other and thought, oh boy, we better get these kittens back inside the house and keep them safe. And we looked up in the sky and sure enough, there were eagles flying around as there often are. Now, this is kind of interesting because I might normally have brushed that off, but because this is Pentecost day and one of the themes of Pentecost is about dreams from the spirit pouring out. So I thought we better listen to that warning. But then later on, my husband thought to himself, well, I'll take the girls out and we'll keep a really close watch on the kittens. And he told me this story and he said, as I looked up in the sky, they saw two eagles 
flying in a tight circle directly above their heads. And then as they watch, an eagle landed on a branch and it was looking right at the kittens. And so he said, girls, grab the kittens. We're taking them inside. And the story ended happily, which I can say was probably thanks to my little second graders dream, giving us a warning. So because of that warning we had ahead of time, we were tuned into it and were able to be prepared and to act accordingly. So there was no direct prayer said, but that prayer of our hearts was answered because that would have been devastating if one of those eagles had grabbed those kittens, not just to me and my kids, but to their cousins whose kittens they were. So I wanted also to share a story that one of my friends shared with me. She shared this and gave me permission to share. And she said that this was one of those really crazy events where the spirit warned her and protected her because the Holy Spirit can warn us through gentle promptings and our listening and action are paramount in these cases. So for her, she woke up early, was doing her normal morning routine. She turned on the water to warm it up. And she said she just had this thought to brush her teeth. And she kind of shrugged it off because that was not her normal routine to brush her teeth before getting in the shower. But she could not get that thought out of her head until she finally realized, I think this is a prompting. And as she turned to grab her toothbrush, the glass shower door shattered everywhere without warning, without any kind of provocation. And as it turned out, it was a newly installed shower door. And apparently this is a very, very rare occurrence. But after being installed, there was a lot of pressure. And with the changing temperature of the water, that glass just shot all over the bathroom. And if she had been inside the shower when that happened, this story would have been completely different because you can see this circled area right here was the only area where there was no glass and she did not get a cut on her body. She was completely fine. So thank goodness that the Holy Spirit can warn us. So I have a friend who goes to the temple frequently and she shared this story with me. And I thought this was a great Pentecost story about covenant blessings pouring out. As Elder Rasban said in this last general conference, in his talk, Words Matter, he said, I promise that if we feast upon the words of Christ that lead to salvation, our prophet's words that guide and encourage us, and our own words that speak of who we are and what we hold dear, the powers of heaven will pour down upon us. Now, she explained this story to me that she was driving around Provo. This was on the day of her son's birthday. Her sister was in town and her sister's daughter was in town as well. Now the daughter had just gotten back from serving a mission in Rome, Italy, serving at the visitor center. And the three of these wonderful covenant keeping women were sitting stuck in traffic and they saw a car speeding towards them. She said it was going at least or more than 50 miles per hour. And as she watched in horror, trapped, she really could not move anywhere. She knew that this car was going to impact and T-bone her right where she was on the driver's side. And so as she watched this car coming, bracing for impact, holding her breath, she looks and continues to look, but all of a sudden that car is stopped there just an inch away from her car. And the way she described it was it didn't stop and screech and just barely not hit it. She said from her vantage point, it seemed as if time had stopped and almost as if a few seconds of that experience had disappeared in the sense that she knew it was going to hit her. And then the next thing she knew, 
it was just one inch away from her car and stopped. And the driver was sitting there looking dazed and he just quickly drove away, probably out of embarrassment and shock. But she just looked at her sister. So it was her, her sister and her sister's daughter. And they said, we just experienced a miracle. And later on, she had the opportunity to go to the temple and reflect upon what had happened. And she said, in her mind's eye, it was given to her to see that there was a shield of protection placed around her and that it wasn't her time to go and that she was protected. So whether we say a prayer or it's a silent prayer of the heart, President Holland, he returned from a near-death experience at this last general conference to tell us, Brothers and sisters, I testify that God hears every prayer we offer and responds to each of them according to the path he has outlined for our perfection. We need to believe in angels and miracles and the promises of the Holy Priesthood. That was his Motions of a Hidden Fire talk from April General Conference 2024. So in my last video, I talked about how the number five can be a symbol of covenant protection or on the flip side, covenant warning. And I find it kind of interesting that this was in church news recently. It says five upcoming temple dedications in five Sundays. So we also have in this last general conference, President Nelson announces the locations of 15 new temples. So 15 being five plus five plus five at the conclusion of April 2024 general conference. So if we think of this number five, or when you do three numbers in a row, that's really emphasizing that number. I like to attach meaning to numbers. And for me, now, every time I see a number five, I will remember this concept of covenant protection and covenant warning. And as I was thinking about this, I just had this thought that there were probably going to be five, five, five scriptures in the Book of Mormon on this theme. And I wasn't disappointed. So it was just a confirmation of the spirit speaking to me again in this symbolic way. And so I'm going to show you, this is pretty amazing because the book of Mormon contains 15 books. So five plus five plus five. And in these 15 books, five of them have a chapter five, verse five scripture is perfectly in sync with this theme of covenant deliverance and warnings. And even in Doctrine and Covenants 5.5, 5, it follows that theme. So Doctrine and Covenants section 5, verse 5 says, Verily I say unto you that woe shall come unto the inhabitants of the earth if they will not hearken unto my words. So we have a warning. And now looking at our five Book of Mormon scriptures in 1st Nephi chapter 5, verse 5, we have a theme about where it says, I know that the Lord will deliver my sons. And then notice in Alma chapter 5, verse 5, it says, again, the Lord did deliver them out of bondage by the power of his word. So let me go back to 1st Nephi chapter 5, 5. It says, but behold, I have obtained a land of promise in the which things I do rejoice. Yea, and I know that the Lord will deliver my sons out of the hands of Laban and bring them down again unto us in the wilderness. And then in Alma chapter five, verse five, and behold, after that, they were brought into bondage by the hands of the Lamanites in the wilderness. Yea, I say unto you, they were in captivity, and again, the Lord did deliver them out of bondage by the power of his word. And we were brought into this land, and here we began to establish the church of God throughout this land also. And then in 3 Nephi chapter 5, verse 5, it says, But as many as there were who did not enter into a covenant, so notice that, enter into a covenant and who did still continue to have those secret murders in their hearts 
Yea, as many as were found breathing out threatenings against their brethren were condemned and punished according to the law. And then in Mormon chapter 5, verse 5, it says, But it came to pass that whatsoever lands we had passed by and the inhabitants thereof were not gathered in, were destroyed. So there's that warning that if you're not gathered in, then they were destroyed by the Lamanites and their towns and villages and cities were burned with fire. And then finally, in Mosiah chapter 5, verses 5, it says, and we are willing to enter into a covenant. So there's that covenant again, with our God to do his will and to be obedient to his commandments in all things that he shall command us all the remainder of our days that we may not bring upon ourselves a never ending torment as has been spoken by the angel that we may not drink out of the cup of the wrath of God. So why do the scriptures warn and instruct us with signs of the times? Well, God's first purpose in giving these prophecies is to keep his saints and faithful followers aware of the path and direction of current events so that they may know how to prepare. So these warnings are often called the signs of the times. According to Doctrine and Covenants 4539, it shall come to pass that he that feareth me shall be looking forth for the great day of the Lord to come, even for the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. Further, Doctrine and Covenants 6811 states, Unto you it shall be given to know the signs of the times and the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. And it also says, The coming of the Lord draweth nigh, and it overtaketh the world as a thief in the night. Therefore gird up your loins, that you may be the children of light, and that day shall not overtake you as a thief. So compare that also to Thessalonians. In all of these examples, the point is that neither the second coming nor the events leading up to it are to take the saints unprepared. And the second of the twofold purpose of these prophecies is to warn the nations. Now, the Lord states in Doctrine and Covenants, section 43, verse 25, that he has called upon the nations and he lists so many ways that he is trying to get the attention of the nations. He says, by the mouth of my servants and by the ministering of angels and by mine own voice and by the voice of thunderings and by the voice of lightnings and tempests and earthquakes and hailstorms and famines pestilences of every kind and by the great sound of a trump and by the voice of judgment and by the voice of mercy all the day long and by the voice of glory and honor and the riches of eternal life and would have saved you with an everlasting salvation but ye would not so our prophet president nelson he has so many great quotes and if you want to watch an amazing video True Millennial came out with this. It's called, Is the Second Coming Close? And it's just this great compilation of what President Nelson has said. He is being very clear and direct and talking about extraordinary measures. So let me just read a few of these quotes to keep them fresh in your mind as we continue this topic. So he says, Moroni helped them create areas where they would be safe. Places of security, he called them. Similarly, as turmoil rages around us, we need to create places where we are safe, both physically and spiritually. The Lord has told us that if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. Of course, we can store our own reserves of food, water, and savings, but equally crucial is our need to fill our personal spiritual storehouses with faith, truth, and testimony. We are sparing no effort to give this venerable temple a foundation that will withstand the forces of nature into the millennium. In like manner, it is now time that we each implement extraordinary measures, perhaps measures we have never taken before, to strengthen our personal spiritual foundations. 
unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures. And finally, he says, for decades, the Lord's prophets have urged us to store food, water, and financial reserves for a time of need. The current pandemic has reinforced the wisdom of that council. I urge you to take steps to be temporally prepared, but I'm even more concerned about your spiritual and emotional preparation. And finally, he says, we have never needed positive spiritual momentum more than we do now to counteract the speed with which evil and the darker signs of the times are intensifying. Positive spiritual momentum will keep us moving forward amid the fear and uncertainty created by pandemics, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, and armed hostilities. So how interesting that he mentions these darker signs of the times, how what we need to do is to combat that with our positive spiritual momentum. So we've talked about some of the testimonies of the sun, the moon, the earthquakes, events. We know that God is trying to speak to us in many different ways. And I've talked about all of these things, so I'm not going to go over it, but I just want to highlight this midpoint eclipse date. So this is the exact middle date between the two great American eclipses, the first one occurring August 21st, 2017, and the second being April 8th, 2024. There was another solar eclipse on this midpoint date of December 14th, 2020, and I just discovered a bunch of new things that happened on that date, so it's pretty fascinating, and I'm going to share that with you. So on December 14th, we had the total solar eclipse over Chile and Argentina. But also on this day, this was the day that the first big V poke in 2020 was given. So you can see that over right here. And this is also the midpoint day of Hanukkah of that year. And I've done quite a few videos about second coming events in Hanukkah, but let me just describe this. So Hanukkah commemorates the cleansing and rededication of the temple to the Lord after the Jews recaptured it from the Greek army and Antiochus Epiphanes who had defiled it. The cleansing and dedication of the temple points to the dedication of the ultimate temple, the church or body of Christ at Jesus's coming. And then in this Hanukkah scripture, it says, the word of the Lord came to Haggai saying, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the thrones of kingdoms and destroy the power of the kingdoms of the ungodly nations. So you have this theme of the kingdoms of the world turning over to the kingdoms of God. On the same day, we have Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who were certified by the Electoral College. Then also on this day is the Iran president Ricey's birthday. And why this is important and tied to the eclipses is we are looking at that Pentecost day was 40 days after the eclipse and he was killed in a helicopter crash on Pentecost day. And another Pentecost connection is that his birthday, this midpoint eclipse day is also the 50th. So Pentecost means 50 was the 50th Monday of that year of, sorry, that's a typo. It was the 50th Monday of 2020, this December 14th. So Elder Oaks had some interesting commentary on March 14th, 2020 about those events that were going on. He was at a missionary meeting in Las Vegas. And if you just search these words, you'll find a couple different, I was able to find three different sources quoting what he said. And he said, this is not the end of the world, but merely a test, a trial run for the second coming, if you will, physically and spiritually. So if that was a trial run, it makes me think, I wonder, we are going to see similar events, but just more heightened and extreme leading up to the actual second coming. And then we have President Nelson, our prophet, 
at this last general conference saying this. He said, Joseph Smith, the Joseph Smith dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple is a tutorial about how the temple spiritually empowers you and me to meet the challenges of life in these last days. Now notice he doesn't say latter days, but these last days. And I find it pretty fascinating that in 2 Nephi chapter 20, verses 13, it gives us some more information about the last days and the trials that are going to come. So it says, I have moved the borders of the people. So notice these themes and it's talking about borders being moved, which reminds me of some problems we're experiencing here in the United States with our borders. And it says the results of this and have robbed their treasures. And I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. So this is talking about the antichrist. Now he says, and my hand hath found as a nest. Notice this bird imagery, the riches of the people. And as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth and there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped. So he's using this bird imagery of stealing the eggs and no one is protesting. He's able to do it without anyone really putting up much of a fight. And then in the next verse, it says, therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts send among his fat ones leanness and under his glory, he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. So because of what happens with this robbery of the nest, it says that there will be leanness. And as I read the scripture, it just pointed my mind again to this video that I did in April before general conference. That was about seven years of lean kind ahead on this. And this has a cow lean kind and a bird theme here. So at the very end, we have our message of hope, and it says that the light of Israel shall be for a fire and his holy one, our Savior Jesus Christ, for a flame. So there's our beautiful promise. Okay, so I have to tell you, this is the second time that I am recording this. The first time I recorded it, for some reason, my slides did not move, but when I got to this slide, which is my big, should be this, this slide should have flashing lights and sirens going off. And actually at that exact moment, one of my teenage daughters was lighting a candle and it set off our fire alarms. So you could hear the fire alarms going <laughs> and maybe I'll add in that clip so you guys can hear that when I recorded it the first time. But is that the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services are currently producing... Whoa. It was the perfect sound effect because, I mean, putting aside all the connections, every connection that I make does not necessarily have meaning. I just throw them out to you, everything that I think of, and leave it to you to sort through it or decide if it has meaning to you. But this just logically should set off some alarm bells. It says the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services are currently producing 4.8 million doses of H5N1 bird flu vaccines. So... The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services are moving forward with a plan right now. This was just news from a few days ago. 4.8 million doses of H5. We'll just call that the big 5B. So we're getting ready for pandemic preparedness. So if this is what the government is doing, I think it's a good signal or sign that we should think about what we can do to be prepared just in case. Because you never know. And if you're just looking at patterns, I see some more alarm bells. So second pandemic warning, maybe, well, the second case of H5N1 tied to cow outbreak occurred on the second Passover Hebrew date of this year. That was May 22nd of 2024. And you can see here the CDC 
reports the second human case tied to dairy cow outbreak on May 22nd, 2024. So if you're wondering what second Passover is, it is described in the Bible in the book of Numbers in chapter 9, verses 9 to 11. And in there, the Lord tells Moses to inform the Israelites that they can still celebrate Passover if they were not able to do so during the original Passover. So you know that God is a God of grace and second chances, and it specifies in that scripture that the celebration should take place on the 14th day of the second month, and this year that was May 22nd. So in 2 Nephi chapter 20, verse 16, it says, Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness. So we have that herd theme. We have the lean kind theme, all tied into events and challenges of the last days. So again, if some of these coincidences, if you think, oh, that's a nothing burger, I don't. I don't think that means anything. Well, this should probably mean something. This should, again, set off alarm bells. Because generally, if you follow the money, the pattern shows you what is coming next. So I encourage you to use your heart, mind, and spirit to decide how and if you need to prepare. As President Nelson emphasized a quote from Doctrine and Covenants, he said, If ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. I listed the website down here so you can actually see some of the bills and laws that were just recently passed in this last month. But basically, Congress readies over a billion dollars for future animal to human infectious diseases like bird flu. The USDA conducts gain of function experiments on H5N1 bird flu, potential pandemic threat. That is listed in the CDC and the USDA develops vaccines for H5N1. This is all happening right now. So this is a concerning pattern that can tell us something about what we should be prepared for, possibilities. But we can always remember and have felt and have faith. So not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of order. So when our prophet talked about Doctrine and Covenants 109, he really emphasized that part in the scripture where it talks about having a house of order and prayer and fasting. And in 2 Nephi 20, 17, it says, And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame. So we always have Jesus Christ to help us. And President Nelson, he emphasized that this dedicatory prayer in Doctrine and Covenants 109 is a tutorial about how the temple spiritually empowers you and me to meet the challenges of life in these last days. He said, I encourage you to study that prayer recorded in Doctrine and Covenants section 109. So we want to be able to hold on to these promises. So I'm going to read these promises once again so that you can have them deeply embedded in your hearts and minds. Do you see that number five? you can be reminded of all of these blessings. So one, that God's glory would rest upon his people. Two, that those who worship in the temple would be taught properly. Three, that people would grow up in the Lord, receiving a fullness of the Holy Ghost. Four, that the house of God would be all it was meant to be with no unclean thing permitted therein. Five, that when the saints transgressed, they would return quickly to the Lord. Six, that his servants could go forth armed with power and protected by the angels to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. Seven, that he would establish his people forever against all the enemies who fight against them. Eight, that their sins would be forgiven. And nine, here's that Pentecost. So we're talking about Pentecost, that the powers of Pentecost would come upon them. 10, that the servants of God would have the power of the covenant and bear testimony of it throughout the world. Oh, and I just wanted to comment about Pentecost that if you watch the happy ladies video, she talks about 
her experience, which I believe was over Pentecost weekend too, it was at that time. And she talked about how Christ manifested himself to her, not in personage, but in just her experience. It was actually kind of similar to the experience that I had in the temple. But she also noted in her slides that if you look at the history, it talks about the saints experiencing 15 weeks of Pentecostal outpouring. So there was that number again of five plus five plus five, so 15 weeks. But moving on, moving on from that symbol. Number 11, that the servants of God would be delivered from the calamity of the wicked and the judgments that are promised. 12, that the Lord would have mercy on the nations of the earth, softening their hearts to prepare them for the gospel message. And 13, that stakes of Zion would be appointed so the gathering might roll forth. Thank you for joining me today at Christian Fire Poppy. Let's bloom despite the doom and gloom like a true fire poppy. A Zion field of many fire poppies will reduce erosion after world chaos fires. Join us for more fiery passion and preparedness as we fly into the second coming of Jesus Christ.